Hello everyone, welcome to the second week of our six week training program. Today is the evening of Sunday, the 5th of September 2021, and I'm pleased to bring you uh, the lesson, the first lesson for the second week, which is on the concept of interrater reliability of accreditors. So let us begin. Oh, yes, let's begin. Uh, I'm Peter Okebukola, and uh, uh, last lesson, which was on instruments for accreditation, these are the things, the grounds that we covered. And the key message was accreditation instruments should be as comprehensive as possible to include teaching, learning, research, and community service. So engagement, uh, you recall that this came out in the test for week one. I'd like to congratulate you all on the performance in week one. Uh, the discussion forum and the weekly test. Uh, just give me a minute. Let me just uh, rush with you through the score. Yeah, as you can see, the maximum score for the discussion forum is 20. So you can see how, how many people score 20 over 20. Look at these two vices law. Vices laws. Professor Isaac uh, Ajayi uh, was vices law Crawford, now vices law uh, West Spring University. Professor Ibekele Ajibefun was vices law of um, uh, on those state university at Kumba. I like your day, I don't know. I don't like, uh, he's not a vice chancellor, but he's uh, a great man of AUC now, of Federal University of Year. Badija, Odeji, Dean, Debra Dairo, Ayoga, you can see all of them. Uh, there are several vice chancellors there that, are, that I've not highlighted, but I just highlighted a few of them. Fatukun Johnson is the deputy vice chancellor of. Uh, Ankor University, Professor Afi Okune, my dean. Uh, this is the Vice Chancellor of uh, Afe Bobala University. Oh, yeah, you can see Dr. Miriam Sali. That's our girl. That's the Director of Accreditation who is taking this course. Uh, showing you, uh, Tayo Ademola is the VC of Babcock University. Professor Yitokbe Ukumbode, the VC of uh, uh, of Bafemi Awolowo University and uh, several others. Uh, Dr. Piri is uh, the chief executive of of the National Council for Education in Malawi and all of that. So you can see how well we perform. In week one test, uh, maximum score 30. See all these people who scored 30 marks. Professor Ola Akira, the former vice chancellor of Oshun State University and former head of uh, the Provost of the ICPC Academy. Professor Fuakwe Ibiyinka, Vice Chancellor Michael and Cecilia Ibru University. There are several advices also who are there. Patrick Johnson, uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor Anchor, and uh, all of that. Folayo Joseph, that's the Vice Chancellor Anchor University. Professor Bila De, oh, great Vice Chancellor, was Vice Chancellor of uh, Taisho Lanry University of Education. You can see our guy here, Professor Biodo Salu, is also taking the test to see how well. Uh, he has scored and uh, several other. This is a VC award. And uh, so overall, we did very, very well. As you are aware, we had a little technical hitch uh, when the test was to be conducted. And there was this quote that, uh, 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 there was this mail that uh, was sent to me by Professor Smaranda Olarin, the VC of Abuad, about the enthusiasm. And I was so impressed with the summary of what happened she said the high traffic and subscription subscription to the uh, for the test is a clear indication that people are ready to put in effort to improve themselves this is important and make africa a better place to live in this is a good case study of leaders interest in developing quality in higher education in africa i cannot agree with you less our dear professors Miranda Olarin, the vice chancellor. So you see, the initial uh, effort, the initial, the takeoff may be rough, but you see, at the end of it, if you persevere, if you persevere to the end, victory is very sweet. And I, I, I know this because I'm, I'm, I'm going to end uh, a pilot's license uh, for a uh, boy seven three seven eight hundred six. This is me here, and I've been doing some training over the last uh, two or so years. And I know that when you're taking off. In a plane, even without you being a captain, you're a passenger, you're taking off, you find that before it goes through the clouds, you find some mild or heavy turbulence. But as soon as it reaches cruising altitude, things uh, normalize a little bit. Uh, let, let me show you a few things here. 
during one of my training sessions. And uh, okay, let me take it from here. Yeah, you can see, you know, climbing up. Okay, coming down now, uh, when you uh, at, at, at lift off, uh, you have quite a lot of turbulence. But you know, we're about to land in uh, Lagardia Airport in New York. And you can see that uh, this thing is not so that's the important so let's get back on land and uh, is the concept of interrater reliability of accreditation. At the end of this lesson, what are we going to learn? We are going to define what a true score is in the realm of accreditation. And the heart of the matter here is that we're going to compute interrater reliability of accreditors on a side visit. You on a side visit, how do you get your interrater reliability? When you hear this word compute, no be no shako, not be, be it's just like A B C one one, I mean one, two, three, adding. So it's not that steep. Uh, be less fearful of the mathematics of accreditation. That's what, what I was warning you about. And then we're going to be prepared for the practical exercises that will certify you as a global accreditor. Yeah, many of you, like me, when I hear maths, I have this phobia. I don't like mathematics at all. And I suspect that about 80% of us in this course have the same kind of fear. So, but don't worry, uh, we'll get things, you know, running quite well. Uh, but just on the side, you know, when people find maths difficult, I teach, by the way, I teach advanced statistics and advanced research, research methods. I've been teaching, teaching this uh, forever and a day. And I tell you what I do, I try to water down the concept as much as possible. I, I, I'll show you a few uh, things that may, may interest you. I have about, uh, 200 videos online on statistics made easy, on advanced statistics made easy. And uh, one, of, one of the videos is this, conducting path analysis using the an analysis of moment structures. This is a very high-end st statistic. And uh, I uploaded that video on the 22nd of April, 2013. Uh, and I'm quite delighted at what I'm seeing. Eight years ago, well done, Peter, I want you to know you. Uh, there's a uh, thank you for presenting the content in a lucid way. Please add more videos on Amos usage. There's one that I like, uh, I like all of them. This is Libra, this is seven years ago. It's almost the only video about path analysis online, and it's from Africa. Good job. I'm excited about this. Let's see another one quickly. This is my lesson number 25, and it's on computing reliability of a questionnaire. And uh, quite delighted, uh, uh, and back a year ago. Thank you so much, sir. This is exactly the lesson I need for my research. Most tutorial videos, they don't give examples starting from the question. They just go straight for the variables. This is a very great example. Uh, let's see. Quite a nice uh, and simple explanation. Thanks. Your question had multiple sections and all of that. Uh, best teacher ever. This is exciting for me. Several years. Is not lie, I'm not the best teacher. I just try my Try a small, small. Seven years ago. Best teacher ever. Thank you very much. Uh, this is what I need. Thanks for the lesson. Thanks for the fruitful lesson. Looking forward to many more uh, and all of this. I shall power. Sir, I have three parameters in my question. I shall I do this? I already responded to them. Uh, very informative video. A quick question. We shouldn't be variable and all that, which I responded to. So I try to do my best to make it as uh, easy as uh, possible. Okay, so uh, let's see. We uh, have you ever wondered why <laughs> we call it instrument in accreditation? Yeah, this is because it is scientists, they have their instruments, and the people outside science now want to borrow this word instrument. Because when you want to find out how much this boy or girl knows, you have to administer something. If you want to find out the temperature, you administer this thermometer as an instrument. So you want, to, you want to find out the attitude of somebody, you administer a questionnaire. So it's like an instrument too, that you are dipping into the mind or head or whatever of the person, also the test. So that is why we outside of science also call it an instrument. But if you call it an instrument, they must, must say that it must report its reliability. Ah, uh, exam matter. If you say it's a science, okay, explain why economics as a science. Answer. Yes, economics is totally a science because many teachers here in Ghana always says economics is a science. Again, my lecturer also said it's a science. Also, Alfred Marshall then said it's a science. And lastly, not the least, 
Professor Lionel Robbins said, economics is also a science. And therefore, who am I to say economics is not a science? Please consider me. <laughs> you know what he got? Man, I was 20. The teacher wrote idiot. Now, write an essay. This is an English test. Write an essay about 400 to 500 words on how rain starts. Uh, 50 marks. How rain starts. Don't be a problem. It's, the answer is as two, 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 two. Oh. Well, let's move on to the matter for the day. The first objective is for us to define a true score in accreditation. Now, the ordinary meaning of a true score will surprise you. Uh, when you as vice chancellor or you as a professor or lecturer or whatever, you present your report at the, uh, your scores at the fa uh, departmental faculty or university saying it, that is not the true score. The true score is not known. The true score of the student or, or, the, uh, or a program where you are doing accreditation will have received, that's the score, that student or the program will have received if there was no error of measurement. And you can, nobody can tell us, me, that there's no error of measurement in the scores that you are taking to send, even if it were to be multiple choice. In the real world, therefore, there's always error of measurement. Always error of measurement. So the true score hardly exists. <laughs> so let's assume that this test that we did on uh, on Friday or early Saturday morning, that you 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 know exactly seventy percent of all that you all that we taught or you were presented to you during the course of the week. Seventy percent of that. Now, this is your true score. That's seventy percent that you know. Now, a perfect test, a per perfect test, which doesn't exist. The only one I gave to you does is not a perfect test. You ideally reflect this true score. But in reality, you are likely to score around 65% or 75%. That means more than that or less than that. Now, the 5% discrepancy from your true score is the error. So in classical test theory, uh, true score theory, this is Novik who came out with it. That's the uh, reference. Said the true score theory assumes that each person has a true score T that would be obtained if there were no errors in measurement. But it's a theoretical value that represents the test taker score without an error. So what we're trying to do in this course is to ensure that that error of measurement will minimize it. And towards the end of this training, six-week training, that's why six weeks, you'll find out that will be moving very quickly towards a true score. So the true score is the error-free score. And A, don't let any formula uh, bamboozle you. Now, this was very simple. It's telling us that this is your score, the observed score. That's the one you score during this test. It's equal to your true score plus error. That's simply what it's saying. So what has true score got to do with accreditation? A lot. True score has to do with accreditation because accreditation is about scoring. And the goal of any scoring exercise, anyone, is to catch the elusive true score. That's the goal. So the desire of you, of myself, as a creditor, is to score the program or the institution in a way that will reflect the true standing of the program or the institution on the standards in the accreditation instrument. So what has reliability got to do with all of this uh, thing, all of this? Now, consistency is important in the measurement. So when the measurement is consistent, consistency right, so it's reliable. And reliability, you see in a minute, maybe low reliability, average reliability, or high reliability. The goal of this course is to move us to the right side of the spectrum. Now, take a GST lecturer. That's uh, uh, for those who are not from a general studies course where you have many students. Uh, the lecturer is marking a bundle of 300 plus scripts. But it's consistent in the application of the marking scheme. So you find that, they, that, 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 that's, that that's reliable. But I tell you, I tell you, in a large number of cases, this doesn't happen. The lecturer is inundated, is overwhelmed with large scripts. I will just uh, put some tick marks there and just award the marks and all that. Uh, but that, that, that is, that is uh, neither here nor there. But let's take a three percent group of accreditors that is consistent in the scoring of items on the accreditation instrument say that's reliable so let's go let, let's look at it from a simple and everyday uh, perspective let's take this uh, balance 
uh, I stepped on it this morning and it gave me my weight of uh, 90.2 kilograms. Let's assume that I come out of it and I step back without wearing anything other than what I was wearing when I stepped on it and it gave me 85.2 kilograms. Hmm. And I come back again and it gave me 121 kilograms. So what am I going to say? It's not reliable. Or that's low reliability. It's consistently measuring it, but that's very low reliability. Let's take this uh, thermometer. You point at me and it's reading 36.5 degrees. By the way, it's not centigrade. We can call it centigrade, but that's all in the nomenclature. Celsius. 36.5 degrees Celsius. So, and it, you, you take it again the next minute and it's reading 40.4 degrees Celsius. You take it again, it's really 15 points, so it's low reliability. So let's move on to inter-rater and inter-rater reliability. By what you have heard, by, by, the, by the names, you find you know the meaning. Intra-rater and inter-rater. The intra-rater is a measure of how consistent you as an individual, you are marking your scripts or you are assessing the program or you are assessing the institution. Inter-rater is, oh, there are three of us, how are we comparing the three of us? Now, I want us to please note that we should not allow elements like fatigue. You know, you travel from one institution to another because you have to do one half days in one institution, jump to another one, and there's fatigue, and you allow it to, uh, to uh, you know, distort your assessment, uh, or you, you have a bundle of papers or scripts, and you let a good paper influence the grading of the next paper. The grader should not compare papers together, but they should grade each paper based on the standard. And this is also applicable to accreditation. You left a, a university, super, very, very good. And you go to another one and it's not so good. You have the instruments for accreditation. Use the instruments as the, as the standard. So the heart of the matter for this lesson is inter-rater reliability. Waiting it be, what is it? You see, uh, let's abbreviate it as IRR, inter-rater reliability. is the degree of agreement in the ratings that two or more observers assigned to the same behavior or observation. It has some namesake, so uh, you can say inter-rater reliability, yes, inter-observer reliability, inter-grader reliability, inter-accreditor reliability, or inter-coder reliability, or not the same thing. Sorry, I'm using pigeon, uh, pigeon here. Now let's jump into the methods of computing IRR. There's a simple percentage one, very simple percentage. That is the manual one. I'm going to do it now. And then you can use a computer. And then these are the variables that it's going to give to you. Now, the steps for computing the IRR by simple percentage, very straightforward. You determine the items on which the accreditors agree. You add up all the items of agreement. You calculate your IRR. So let's assume that there's a team that Dr. Miriam Sally has uh, well, under the authority of my, my girl, Barbara she asked to go to a university, Nigeria University, to go and uh, do a side visit for the BSc chemistry program. And that team is chaired by Professor Suleiman Adamu. You have Professor Tunde Adebayo as member, Professor Chuku, uh, John Chuku as member, and Dr. Angela Irene, NC Rep, as secretary. Oh, uh, the phone, the place where they come in, and they get there. Now, Dr. Miriam Sally will give them this thing. We give them this program evaluation form. And in that form, you have all of these parameters, all of these standards. And the maximum scores are given also. So let's now do a practical exercise. And you, I'm sure you, you will love it about how the, uh, the computation of the IRR is done using simple percent. So the accreditation exercise is over. They have inspected everything. And uh, Professor Adamo, the chair, now tells everybody, yeah, you score. Score independent, not the one that will be arguing. This is this, this, this. If they are well-trained, like we are training you, then that argument will not arise. So for philosophy and objectives, let's assume that Professor Adamo has a one, you have a one, and you have a one. So agreement is what? Yes, perfect agreement. So for the perfect agreement, you put a one. Okay, let's take a uh, curriculum relationship. Out of four marks, uh, Professor Adamo gives a three, he gives a four, he gives maybe a two. So this one, there's no agreement, that's a zero. So you do the same for all of them. Everywhere there's an agreement, you put a one. When there's no agreement, you put a zero. 
And then what you do is you count the number of areas where they have agreed and find as a proportion of the whole. That's as easy as can be. But let me give you uh, the, uh, the follow up to this. So the follow up is this you have uh, uh, the, the agreement column as we had it before. So I've done populated this agreement column. So how did I do that? See, look at it. They have agreed on this one 433, no agreement. 3-2, no agreement. Here, uh, Adebayo had uh, 0, this one had a 3, no agreement. 1-1-2, one, one, no agreement. 2-1-2, one, one, no agreement. 1-1-1, one, 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 agreement. 1-1-1, one, 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 agreement. 3-1-4. So, what you then do at the end of the day is to add up all the agree all the items where they have agreed. So, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all of these. I counted them, and what did that come to? It came to 19 agreed items 19 and the total is 36 so the percentage of 19 to 30 of 36 is 52.8 percent so they are just about 53 percent agreement so that is the <laughs> irr the inter rater reliability of this three person team that dr miriam sally sent to this university to uh, uh, accredit the BSc chemistry program. So, what, what would be your judgment? My judgment would be that are not. I mean, it's uh, so disparate. I mean, if three percent is is, is uh, super low. Uh, so, let's take another example. In this example, I have uh, improved the areas where they uh, agreed. I've improved it, and if you count the number of areas where they have where, where they have reached agreement, it has now come to 24. So the IRR or the interrater reliability is 66.6%. That's like 70%. That is not bad. You can see they have several areas where they uh, have disagreed and they have areas where they uh, have agreed. Let, let's even do something quick. Uh, let me find the okay. No, that's not this one. That's not this. Yeah, what I was trying to do was to do uh, to add the scores for uh, each of the professors. So for the chair, a hundred out of uh, let's see the total for this out of one twenty four, it got a hundred. Uh, the professor here got 91, the professor here got 99, and they gave us an interrater uh, agreement or interrater reliability of 70%. So you can see it. Now I have another another example. In this in this example, I've uh, improved or increased the number of areas where they have agreement to 27 out of 36. So the percentage agreement is now 79.4%. How, how, how did I get this one? It's just 27 over 36 times 100. That will give us 79.4. That's the simple uh, arithmetic there. So you can see uh, out of 124, uh, the team lead gave 100. You have 99. You have 99. Uh, the areas of agreement are the ones listed here. So that's as easy as you can have for calculating interrater reliability using the percentage method. And that's what I recommend because the other one is uh, a little bit uh, on the well, slightly mathematical side. Yeah, all done with the practical of that. And uh, so to recap, to calculate the IRR, that's the interrater reliability using the simple percentage method, three simple steps. You determine the items on which the accreditors agree, yes. You add up all the items of agreement, and then you calculate the percentage of all the items of agreement. That will give you the IRR. I think it's about time we proceeded on a break, and uh, I will see you after the interlude. <music> Welcome back from the short break. Uh, welcome to a test. We're going to do a test. Uh -uh, not for you. 
This is the 2020 21 semester, second semester exam for 300 level home economics uh, student. And the teacher, he, he, he read out the questions. Cancelling of answers, not allowed. Question number one What is your favorite food? 10 marks. Where the female students were busy scrambling to write pizza, fried rice, shawarma, hamburger, jollof, peri peri, Indian bolognese. The teacher said, How do you prepare the food? 50 marks. Oh, immediately the female students said canceling and changing the foods to indomie gari with no soup white rice with plain stew uh, so we finished with white rice with plain soup we are moving on now to the second method which is using the computer uh we're going to take a couple of the methods and we look at the one for absolute agreement and uh, don't be scared because it's uh, as easy as can be you can say uh this this young lad uh actually doing this computing ir <laughs> if you believe that you believe anything but it's a good lad and it's uh you know working on this uh, computer now you we're going to use a, a tool it's called the ibm spss statistics by the way spss standalone does not exist ibm bought it up so it's now ibm spss uh so how do we proceed but it has some assumptions before we use that uh, software for this irr for this uh, absolute agreement cohen's kappa flays kappa krippendorf's alpha let me assure you before you go on that we'll just take this first two uh, the others will have to wait you know you can check out uh some of my videos later and you'll see how easy this uh software i mean the analysis techniques are like so the assumptions are this the response variables that the variable that's been assessed by two or more returns is a category variable we meet this assumption the two or more returns are independent yes that is met uh which means that one returns judgment does not affect another returns judgment the targets being returned are randomly selected for the population of interest rather than being specifically chosen. We have made these assumptions. And the goal of this course, by the way, is uh, to ensure that we reduce the amount of disparity among graders. So that by the time you finish this training and you have this certificate as an accreditor, anywhere you go, you'll be globally recognized. And NUC will know that, oh, you are trained. And if you are in that team, you are or leading the team or whatever you are you're going to be uh, getting exact score that should be you'll be close to the true score now calculating irr using ibs spss uh, there are three simple steps all the steps are simple by the way to compute the absolute agreement uh, thing you copy data to ibm spss you analyze you just go through this step you go to analyze you go to scale reliability analysis statistics interclass correlation coefficient type absolute agreement and the result will show you irr as absolute measure interclass correlation this grammar is too too much let us see how it is done and you see the thing is as simple as i've said it maybe it's not <laughs> as simple you will see that it's as simple as i've demonstrated this is how it is done you have your normal table of how these three professors have scored. Of course, I've removed the agreement one that you do with hand. That one, uh, if you like, uh, small picking you, but it's good because that's the one that uh, we'll be focusing more on. That's a percentage agreement, which also an approximate measure of IRR. So I've taken that off and I've used a version of this table that has large, you know, proportion of uh, uh areas where they have, where, where they have agreed one 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 three 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 uh two 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 one 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 uh, and all of that so this is the one we're going to use so how do you then proceed all you do maybe at nuc or everyone in your team have this and it can be as many as possible that we're going to do that in the class with almost like 500 800 of us so we're going to just take this ones we don't need the maximum score we take the scores of uh, the professors and move it all the way down like this. Uh, select them. So we're going to take all the scores that you have and see what kind of agreement do we have. So 
I'm copying this and I'm taking it to SPSS, IBM SPSS. So this is the IBM SPSS data view, inter data view interface. If you don't get IBS, don't worry yourself. The world will not end. Just settle with the uh, uh, the agreement one per percentage. So you don't have copied the other one to the clipboard. So all you are doing here is just paste, pasting the. These are the scores of the professors. Uh, let me name the professors here. This, of course, is Professor Adamu uh, Adebayo. And uh, excuse me. So that's done, and then we we'll come back here, and uh, let, let me. You can see that there are more So there are only few keystrokes that uh, separate us now from uh, this raw data, this raw data, and the IRR. So what? Uh, let, let me go back to show you the sequence as I mentioned earlier. So these are the steps that I mentioned earlier. We copy data to IBM SPSS. I have done that. They will just go to analyze, scale, reliability analysis, statistics, intra-class correlation coefficient. Then in the type, you take absolute agreement. And then result will show you your IRR. So let's get back to Mr. IBM SPSS. It's waiting for us. Oh, you've been waiting for us. Okay, here, yeah, here we are. So we just go on like this, analyze. So what's next? What's next is scale. What's next? What's next is reliability analysis. And then we'll put all of this. Uh, okay, you will get them here. But to move all these, your uh, accreditors, move their scores here. And then we go to statistics. And uh, let's see what you select. Uh, two way that's fine you take absolute agreement you have consistency and you have absolute agreement you take absolute agreement and they will say continue and that's it you may of course want to take on other options and explore uh, this facility but we don't need it for this exercise so as you can see we have our results here with a class correlation coefficient this is the, the this is the average measures that's the intra-class correlation so we're looking at this 0.975 and well, don't let me uh, push you too hard, but maybe you want to know that this is significant uh, value, which is quite good. So our IRR using this method is point, 0 0.975, if you like, 0 0.8. So that's it. Oh, did I say hand up? Oh, somebody wants me to repeat. Oh, yes. Uh, I'll just give you a quick uh, uh, repeat of that. Let me do a repeat with another set of uh, uh, scores that these three assessors sent in. And uh, I will just take it like this. So, yeah, those are the three assessors. I'm not taking their totals. And uh, I will right click, I will copy, and then I'll go to Mr. SPSS that's waiting for us. Uh, so SPSS, here we come, IBM SPSS, here we come again. Uh, no, 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 we're not using this data. We, are, we have another one. So let me create another data uh, table. So this is it. So let me paste this one here. So you paste. Uh -huh. Yeah, for purpose of identification, you can change the variable names. Uh, this is a demo. Uh, we have Adebayo. And of course, we have Chuku. I hope uh, Dr. Angela uh, Rin is taking notes. She's our secretary, by the way. Uh, a very good secretary, brilliant woman. So that's it. You can see it changed. So the thing again is go to analyze what's next, what's next is scale, what's next is reliability. In an event, in an event that you don't know this step, just go to help here, go to help here and tell the topic, tell the tell IFBM SPSS what you want to do. And it will give you the, the flow. So done that we know, go to scale, reliability, analysis. We move these three professors to here and we go to statistics. You take on uh, intra-class correlation. Yes. And the uh, default, default means what it thinks you want to do. 
but that's not what we want. We don't, we don't want consistency. We want the absolute agreement. And then you say continue, and they will say okay, and they see what's given to us. 0.83. You can see this is lower than the other one with uh, uh, less number of agree agreed uh, items. So this is 0.83. It's also significant. So when you are reporting this, so our interpreter reliability is 0 0.84, which is also not bad at all. Uh, we have done two exercises to compute absolute agreement uh, using IBM SPSS. So what's next? Uh, you know, we've done absolute agreement, then we have uh, this other one. So what about Cohen's Kappa, Flay's Kappa, Krippendorf's Alpha? Well, as I said earlier, we're going to be taking these two at a later date. We are going to finalize with Cohen's Kappa. But when are we expecting the, when are we expecting uh, some uh, of these statistics from Africans? When are we expecting Arigba Boost Alpha or Gia's Omega? Gia, by the way, is uh, the is a distinguished professor of pediatrics from Usman Danfodio University. When are we expecting Africans to show up? <laughs> Wamosis Delta, when are we expecting it? Uh, I'm sure in a little while we have these Africans, these young Africans, next generation Africans that will shake the world of uh, computer science and uh, put our name, put the name, name of Africans on the map. Uh, let me say a little bit about uh, Professor Wamosis uh, Delta. Uh, as you can see, uh, 5th of September, that's today, at, at about 1 o'clock. I got a mail from him. Prof, kindly have this in your main library. How very kind of him. So let us see what he has there. He has this full length research paper uh, published in 2009 on modified accelerated Krog Zix algorithm. I read through and I found this paper to be you know, wonderful. And I was thinking that uh, in no time, it should let us have Wam, uh, excuse me, uh, Stephen Ehidiame Wamosis Omega. So while waiting for the Africans, let's just uh, look at Cohen's Kappa. Uh, the limitation with Cohen's Kappa is that it can only handle two accreditors at a time. Like now we have three accreditors. So we'll just do Professor Adamu and uh, Adebayo or Adamu and uh, Chuku or Debayo and Chuku. So that's the limitation that it has. But the process is quite straightforward. You copy the data to SPSS like we've done. You analyze. I mean, the process is this analyze, descriptive statistics, cross tabulation statistics, and then Kappa, and it gives you the value. So the results will show IRR as a measure of agreement Kappa. Let's do a practical, let's have a practical example. So these are the data, that of uh, Professor Adamu, Adebayo on all these items on that, in that instrument. So it will be analyzed. What else? Discrete statistics. Next, cross tabs. And then you can see you can only take two of them. So you took, let's put Adamu here. Let's put Adebayo here, Adamu and Adebayo. We want to find out the degree of agreement. Next one, you go to statistics. And then you can see Kappa, Kappa day here. Just put Kappa there. And that's all. You may wish to explore the other uh, other options, uh, but that is not necessary for this exercise. And you say, okay, so this is it. This is the measure of agreement, Kappa, is 0.818. That's like 0.82 between Adamu and Adebayo. So this is what you report, and uh, it's also significant. Hmm. We'll do the second one. Oh, yes, of course. Let's do that of, uh, just give me a minute now. Yeah, here you can see Adamu Adebayo. You know, Adamu Adebayo across the so we're doing this too. So let's take on uh, uh, analyze descriptive statistics, cross tabs. So let's do Adamu and Chuku. Uh, we have to take Adebayo off. We have to put Chuku here, Chuku here, 
the other options are there. Kappa uh, has already been checked. And then, so this is it. Hey, you can see the thing. Oh. Very interesting. Ah, we both don't go far. Africans, maybe we wake up now to give us our own stat uh, statistical tools. Of course, it will be almost like the same thing in terms of results. Adamu and Chuku, you can see the thing. The Kappa, Cohen's Kappa is 0.71. So it's quite, if you actually go back to the data, you find that you find the difference uh, exists. Let's do Adebayo and Chuku, and that will be it. Analyze <laughs> descriptive studies. I'm enjoying myself, I'm telling you. Uh, cross that, I know maybe you are not enjoying yourself, but me, I enjoy myself. Uh, we're doing, we're taking Adamo, Adamo, go out. Adebayo, come. Adebayo and Chuku, yes, that is, takes, that stays with. Uh, kappa, Cohen's Kappa, and that's it. So you can see, oh, 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 very interesting. What am I seeing? I'm seeing 0 0.601. You can see it's less. 0 0.601 between between Adebaya, Adebaya and Chuku. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, I'm sure you, you 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 can do this. If you can, I'll just uh, go to help and you'll be helped. Yeah, so that's the practical bit for Cohen's Kappa. And uh, okay, now let's look at the let's interpret the result of Cohen's Kappa, the level of agreement. Uh, if it is like 0.6, the one that you had for Adebayo and Chuku, that's just moderate. You can see 0.61 to 0.80, that's substantial, and 0.81 to 1 is near perfect. You hardly can get a perfect one, uh, perfect. Perfection belongs, you know, outside our zone. <laughs> so the question is, do you need all this mathematical? I'm sure all of you, they ask me, do you need all these jargons? To be a good accreditor, the answer is yes, and the answer is no. Yes, because, you know, we're training you to be international, to, to have a global certification in accreditation. And you must know about this concept of inter-retail reliability. And they ask you, how you go on? How do you do intellectual reliability and you're looking? So that's why we know that this is important for you. No, because you don't need to do the computation yourself when you get to the field. The, uh, the National Quality Assurance Agency will do this and then be able to improve on their intellectual reliability. So the Saturday practical sessions will be devoted to increasing our intellectual reliability. And as I keep saying, it's not going to stress you. I will give you some videos that will train you, and then you go ahead and uh, look at scenarios that you, or you uh, the, the group will generate. And then you, at the end of this training, you'll find that if I took three of you in accounting to go to a university, let's, let's say a Madubedo University, to go and accredit, you don't need uh, all these uh, street bear fellows being brought together. Okay, uh, I've, I've received training. You have not received training. Oh yeah, let me, let me train you. That, that's, in, in how many hours? No. So this is a very good exercise, and we are preparing great accreditors for Nigeria and for the rest of Africa. So what have we done in this lesson? We define what the true score is, and we computed inter-retail reliability of uh, accreditors on the side visit using uh, the, the following methods. Percentage agreement, that's the manual one, and then absolute agreement and coherence kappa. So you recall that, let me remind you. In percentage agreement, we only added all those items where the three of them, you know, two of them reached agreement. And just do a percentage over the total. Very straightforward. The absolute agreement, we used IBM spaces. Indeed, you can use Excel uh, and then Coins Kappa for two of the accreditors. But the key message here is that well trained accreditors will have more areas of agreement. Hence, in higher iterator reliability. That brings us to the end of this lesson. And um, I'll see you tomorrow, Monday, in the plenary session, live lecture, where we'll listen to case studies from Botswana, from UAE, and from Malawi. Until I come your way again by way of these lessons, it is bye from me, Peter Kibukola. Okay,